I wasn't I wasn't gifted inside the classroom uh, as I was on the football field. So I basically had to transition myself to prove the people wrong. And when I when I say about prove the people wrong was going to the University of Tennessee. One of the first thing I heard was, hey, this guy's only in school here because he can play football. So that hurt me. So I wanted to prove that gentleman wrong, saying, OK, I'm more than just this athlete. I can I can do something else. So, I mean, I did everything in my power for me to um, just not be an athlete, but be a student athlete down there at UT. And we back on another episode of Beyond the Breaks. Woo! Hey, 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 man, we got my man Turk in the building, Turk my McBride. Boy. You know, glad to have you on. Appreciate man, it, man. You know, Appreciate it's been it. a long time. We, 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 uh, sheesh. We started this back, man. This connection was like back in 2007. And, uh, man, just from, 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 from that extended stay in Kansas City where we had the rookie mini camps yeah. and all that, the rookie camps, man, being in that extended stay. And, man, to where we are now is crazy, man. We have some, We'll, we'll talk about that journey, man. Of course, you got the the word bank, <laughs> Terrell Lambert, you know. <laughs> man, uh, the beautiful thing about this platform, man, the beautiful thing about this show is the, the biggest thing we talk about is transition because that's a part of life, man. No matter from what stage you started, from kindergarten, fresh out the womb, to where we are now, it's constant transition, man. It's just constant steps, man. It's levels to this. And and people don't realize what you go through in the process of life, right? And there's so many different um, avenues we go to through, right? Like where I'm at now as a kid, I would have never thought that I would be here. Mm -hmm. You know, you maybe because every kid be like, I want to be a fireman. I want to be a police officer. I didn't, man. I didn't want to. You didn't think I that, stumbled though. upon that. I, I had no <laughs> idea that was in the cars for me. That was the furthest thing from my mind. Right. Especially me being black. Like, I never seen, I never even seen firemen, much less black firemen. Right. I had no idea they even existed until I got hired. And see, there you have it, man. And it's just like, you know, and it's crazy because, again, you know, like he said, just as a black kid, we, we growing up, we are glorified and uh, um, attracted to the entertainment industry, whether if it's music, uh, TV, sports, we're geared towards that. And mm -hmm. we've all had the luxury to be able to play professional football. A small percentage of people that, that, that does not have this opportunity or don't even make it, that have the opportunity but don't even make it. And my man Turk here, man, uh, Camden kid. Absolutely. You know. Jay. Yeah, like, like when you say Camden, where you from Camden? He gonna Absolutely. say it real fast. He gonna say pride, it. Man. You say it with your chest, pride, right? Man. <laughs> this this dude, man, literally came a long way. I'm still trying to get to where he at. Come on, man. I, I ain't grew up yet. He he grew up a lot more. Man, Turk grown, there. grown. Nah, I just messing. I mean, we grown up, but Turk grown, <laughs> grown, man. You know, he's Extremely. always hey, he's always had an old soul though. Like we can laugh at you, yeah. like look, Turk, no nonsense. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we I have many nights in the basements. Oh yeah, plenty of those. <laughs> plenty of those. Y'all think rap city in the basement? This is Kansas City in the basement. <laughs> You know not too many details. No, nah, no, nah, I can't do details. it. Can't do it. <laughs> um, but no, nah, we definitely had some good times, and we've we've seen each other grow, which is crazy. Absolutely. And um, and I, I want you to just kind of share, um, you know, just kind of growing up and your process of because what started for you is being a, a ball player. Yes. And what was your process? How, how what what made what gave you the confidence? And to feel like, you know what, I'm good enough to play at a major university like Tennessee. What gave me that confidence was not wanting to reside in my in my area for a long period of time. I mean, I, I didn't want to I didn't want to live in, in Camden uh, all my life, to be honest. So, mm -hmm. so that gave me the confidence. Uh, I didn't I didn't really start having confidence in my athletic ability until almost I was about to get drafted. Uh, when I was at the University of Tennessee, uh, even having 94 scholarship offers, parade all America, all in high school, I still didn't think I was talented enough to even go to the next level in the collegiate level. So, I mean, 
what what really drove me was my fear of basically um, being stagnant in the same place where I was gonna basically where I was raised at. I, I didn't want that to to happen. I wanted to change my I wanted to change my life. I wanted to change the the culture of my family life. So I knew God put it through me to try to uh, uplift my family. Nice, nice. And you know me. They got grass in, in Jersey. Yeah, we you got guys, plenty of it, man. It's the Garden play, State. Stop playing with me, man. Really? I was just about to just, when you think of the bat, it's just like concrete. Y'all play basketball. I didn't know they had football on the East Coast. You're right about that. I mean, we yeah, are yeah, amazing yeah, state yeah. for that. Croc, what's that? The only time y'all use uh, grass was for that hockey. That's not, my, that's not my part of Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not my part of Jersey. They may have that, but that's not my part of Jersey. Okay, okay. We got track. We got football. Um, we got basketball. That, that's my part of Jersey. There you that's go. It. Okay, okay. You had the, the three majors. Absolutely. That Nothing we was else. introduced to. Yes. Hmm. That's what's up, man. And and and, and I, I like to mess with him because when we talk about basketball, remember that time we was we was on the court in uh, Blue Springs. And I was serving? I was dunking on everybody. Tell the truth and shame the devil. Listen, we're not cutting to a commercial. <laughs> I was dunking on everybody. He was dunking? He was dunking? Come on, man. Are you kidding? <laughs> just, just look at the gentleman. Look at the gentleman, man. I'm a stand-up guy. <laughs> he wasn't barely hey. hitting the bottom of the net, man. Bro, I had a couple <laughs> jumpers though. Yes, that I'll say yes. Thank but you. Duncan, what, see? you're stretching the truth. It was close. Mm. But look though. So listen, we're getting off sub subject here. Okay. <laughs> 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 All right. So. But we had some good times, man. We got a lot of stories. And it, it is, it's great because being, okay, so now you had the confidence to play at Tennessee, man. And you did some extraordinary things to put yourself in a position to be a second round draft pick. Second round pick, man. And like looking at him now, no, he was like five times bigger than what he is right now. I didn't even know it. it you, oh my gosh. You look at his pictures and then you be like, hold on. Turk, that was you? Like, man, like massive. And, and this is before I known him, but for you to put yourself in that <laughs> position, what was your transition? Like, what was your challenges? What was your, what, what, in college? Because as a freshman, when you go into college, you, you hot, like you said, I'm all this in high school. Mm -hmm. And now you get placed back on a <clears> platform <throat> in college, like you're humble. You got to get the water bottles. You got to do this. You're going to have people trying you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To try to put you back, okay, listen, homie, this is a whole different ball game. You may be this there, but you're not that here. You yeah. have to prove yourself. So what was your biggest challenges? How did you handle that situation? And through that, what helped you excel? Man, the biggest challenges, it had nothing to do with uh, athleticism or, or even really sports. My biggest challenge was inside the classroom. Mm -hmm. I mean, coming from Camden, New Jersey to, you know, University of Tennessee, there was a major uh, difference in just, just the learning styles there. Um, I never truly had to study at the high school I was at, you know, then going to um, college, you got papers, you have uh, your syllabus, you, you got things that you just was unaccustomed to. That was so, a whole different dynamic. Absolutely, so that was, that was the most difficult thing to me. I mean, for, we, we always blessed with a talent, you know, the speed of the game changed a little bit or things of that nature. It was easier for me to adjust to that until just in, in the classroom. I mean, when I was at Tennessee, I probably was logging in every bit about between 20 to 30, you know, study hall hours mm. per week. Um, I wasn't I wasn't gifted inside the classroom uh, as I was on a football field. So I basically had to transition myself to prove the people wrong. And when I when I say about prove the people wrong was going to University of Tennessee, one of the first thing I heard was, hey, this guy's only in school here because he can play football. So that hurt me. Yeah. So I wanted to prove that gentleman wrong, saying, okay, I'm more than just this athlete. I can I can do mm. something else. So I mean I did everything in my power for me to um just not be an athlete, but be a student athlete down there at mm. UT. And and that that's 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 huge because then you have a guy like him to go to a, a prestigious school. So it's just like Notre Dame. That's, that that was the hardest. I can imagine that it it was so hard to the point to where like we all know how hard practice can be. Like it was a dog days. You get you get right. you know you Straight get knocked up. around. Straight up. But I could remember every time they would blow the horn and the and practice was over. Like I would get butterflies in my stomach because I'd be like, man, 
I'm taking 15 units. How am I going to study for this test, write this term paper, meet this deadline? I got a project due over here. Mm. I got another project. And every end, it's like every, every professor treats you as if that you, you're their only, like you're their only uh, student. Mm. Like you don't have no other professors. Like every every professor is like, no, I come first. They don't say, right. but that's how they come that's off. That's how they come out. My, you my know, class is more action. important. Exactly. You know, like, nah, mine I takes variety. Them. So it was just, I had, I had the same issue to the point to where I actually had five tutors and a mentor just because I had to, I had to figure out how to manage my time. Like that, that's something that took me years to master. Yeah. Like years, like literally every 30 minutes I have a new tutor come in. And then I had another one, my mentor, she, what she used to do, she had this big calendar and everything from the time I wake up in the morning at 4.43, cause it was exactly 13 minutes for me to get to, from there to the, to across campus to the, uh, the facility. And we'll, we'll, from that point on to the point where I could nap to where I could like, okay, I got to study for this. Yeah. I could go here at this time. You hear and like, boom, 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 boom. So like literally my life's revolving around a, a proverbial clock. That would that, not just that, but the fact that you waking up every day and it's just like, damn, I gotta do this all over again. Right. Like I just laid down. That, that, and that's a structure. And, and, and it's crazy because coming from high school and transitioning to college, it, it's another type, it's a different structure. It's more um, strict because you can mingle around in high school, they are just gonna give you some bear crawls or something like that, college. They were, they gonna try to take something from you. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and shoot with me, when, when I didn't do well in school and the game of football was taken from me, that's all I needed. That was my biggest punishment. If you say I couldn't play no more, I'm gonna get my act together. That's what kept me out of trouble because I knew what I wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to play ball. And when my grades slipped and it put me in a position, like even when I was going to junior college and I, and for me, I'm getting all these, these calls from different big time colleges. And it's like, yo, you need this, 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 and this for you to be able to transfer. You, that's, that's, that's huge. And that's huge that you're talking about that, that your biggest challenge wasn't the field. That wasn't your transition. Your transition was in the classroom. And I think we can all contest to that. And that's what a lot of these young athletes need to hear because everybody has that ability. Everybody's working hard, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's how can you separate yourself? And a lot of times they don't understand what, between you and another guy comes down to who now, who has a better grace, yeah. who's better mm -hmm. academically, right? And, and the funny thing is, it's a lot of young kids, and, and I'm just now starting to understand it, where I always assumed there was some type of favoritism, mm -hmm. like, hey, um, why, why is this person getting treated this way? Why is this person getting treated that way? Um, we all know, even on the collegiate level, even to the pros, you assume that the best 11 play, but the best 11 really never plays. You know, it's always inside that shuffle. Well, the way that, the way that people define best, it exactly. varies. That's, it that's a subjective vary. thing. Exactly. It comes down to opinion. You're right. And, and it also, also goes down to trust as well. True. So, Inside of that, when you when you have that best eleven, that best eleven is, hey, can you can I count on you? Mm -hmm. Are you accountable? Right. Mm -hmm. And I guess for for me and that helped with that transition was as as I, I saw the difference between people that didn't go to class mm -hmm. and the people that did go to class. Like it seemed like the people that even if your talent was uh, a lot less or wasn't as superior as the rest, the coaches trusted you to you know to do what's supposed thing. to be getting done, going to class, being on time, doing X, Y, and Z. So, I mean, th those, those, those are the little things that turn good to great. That's true. And that's, mm -hmm. that's good you say that because these coaches know if you're going to class or Absolutely. Not. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, knowing, they're knowing this. And they pop up people don't your, understand. Uh, they want to know how can they count on you. If you can't simply be there at a certain time at, at school, but expect to think you're going to do your assignments right on the field, mm -hmm. It's not going to happen because now they're, that, that comes down to questioning your integrity. Mm -hmm. And integrity is doing what's right when no one else is around, right? Absolutely. And, 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 and that's what they see. It's like, oh, you want to act like you're doing things right around us, but we know what you're doing when we're not around, right? So it's like, how can I count on you to, 
okay, you're going to go watch film, which there's some people who uh, they, they're mad scientists when it comes to the game. And then when it comes to the football, I mean, uh, classwork, they're not nowhere no to be found. found. <laughs> you know, it's just like uh, Buddy off uh, the program. He, oh, uh, Alvin Mack. Yeah, I can read. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't hey, say Adidas. Hey, Okie <laughs> Thunder Line. Yeah. What's your assignment? Kill the quarterback. He's he going to give you the whole rundown, yeah. the formation, what's going to come next, right? <laughs> Hey, but he said, I, <laughs> he said, hey, all right, Alvin, what two, what, which two had the uh, Punic Wars? I don't know. Detroit and Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? So, and, 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 and there's some people that are like that. You know what I'm saying? And like, that was huge for that, that one thing to stick out to you for when somebody said, you know what, some of these guys are only here because they can play ball. Yeah. And for somebody to put a limit on somebody like that is rough. And some people are just like, some people could fall in that category if somebody said that to them and they'd be like, shit, that's, that's why I'm here, shit, that's just me. You know what I'm saying? Me too. I'm just here to play ball. I don't care about nothing else. But you took that and, and, and reversed it. You have your degree. Absolutely. You have your degree. And again, you're, you, you, were, you had your accomplishments, got your degree, and now you are a second round pick to the Kansas City Chiefs to probably one of the best years in life history of yeah. 2007 had a great time great memories and and now you're in a whole your life changed overnight yes so what i mean was that like just regarding just the taking the next step out of you know from football to the career path that i'm in now i'm talking about from college to your ch life changing overnight your second round pick with the kansas city chiefs oh see it, the funny thing is, I, I mentally prepared myself for that. So when that happened, it it wasn't that that surreal moment where it's like, oh my god, I didn't believe, I couldn't believe this is this is happening to me. I mentally prepared myself almost as you know before a game. I'm mentally preparing myself. I'm seeing myself make these tackles. I see myself, you know, uh, making these different type plays. So once my name was called, it wasn't I arrived. It was going back to, you know, high school, the college. Now from college to the NFL, I'm back down at the lower the totem pole. Yeah, and then now I'm getting X amount of compensation for me to come here. So I truly have to prove myself. Mm -hmm. So it was no time. Maybe, you know, we had about 24, 40 hours of, you know, celebrating. But after that, it was like, it's getting to it because this is work. <laughs> so that transition, it wasn't, it, it wasn't, it, it just happened so fast. And one thing I can say, because uh, it was a couple draft picks, and this dude didn't come with no extra chains, and he, he did it right. He didn't come with the extra. He wasn't out doing stupid stuff. You know, we had our fun, but he just wasn't doing outrageous, outlandish things. And like, and I, I noticed that, like, and, we was able to vibe on so many different levels. But for him to be able to come in and just watching him work, this dude's motor was Oh, I seen stupid. it. I was with him. He may not have much of a stride, but this dude motor and da 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 da, -da, 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 -da quickness yeah. and, and just his touching. power explosion was is is it's uh it was different. And it's crazy and I need to ask you this and when we're talking about transition, being in the SEC, there was big boys on that line. But when you go to the league, these is big boys and grown man yeah. strength. And just to go up your first time going against somebody that you felt that was truly powerful and to just get punched in the face that one time or just punched in the chest that one time, you like, hold on, let me regroup. How, what was that moment like, man, for you? How, was that, how did that check you? It's a reality check. You know, when, when, you're, when you're accustomed to you know, winning the majority of your battles, and then when uh, the tables get turned, it's like, you know, it, it, it does something to your ego. You know what I'm saying? It but does. also at the same time, when, especially in Kansas City, we had, I want to say at that time, we, we definitely had a Pro Bowl guard mm -hmm. and probably even two Pro Bowl guards at that time. So it was like, you know, you're going against the best of the best. So every, every defeat that I had, I feel like I still was getting better. I still had, a, had an opportunity to figure out how can I? You know what I'm saying? Instead of just, you know, licking my wounds and just, it was, okay, 
I need I need to tighten up my hands. Maybe I need to get off the ball a little bit more. Maybe I need to read I need to read uh how his hands placements are. You know, so I mean when you when you're around greatness like that, and especially when you're in that interior line, things happen fast. So it was it sounds funny, but it was good to get punched in the mouth like that mm. so you can get accustomed to it so you don't want it to continuously keep happening Ooh. to you. Hey, you know he said man? something when he, he said, said something. The table was a turn. With me, my joint just got knocked completely over. It was my first my first time covering anybody was against Isaac Bruce. Who? Isaac Bruce. Just pushed you to the ground. I had an old Isaac, too. That's the only dude that ever made me do a full 360 in press coverage within a five-yard radius, bro. You know what? You know what? Some of you said some. For every defeat that I had, I felt like I was still getting better. Absolutely. That right there, I, I, that, that, because, and then to follow up with what you said, you started reading hand placement, you started reading this, you started reading the finer details in your opponent and within yourself. And what people don't understand, you know, just being an entrepreneur in life, being an athlete in life, being whatever you're enduring just in that growth period, we're going to have defeats. That's a part of the process. And there's people, and it's a part of the process, and there's people who give up. But yet, still, instead of giving up, saying, you know what, I'm not good enough, I keep getting defeated, I'm not winning these battles, I'm not winning, I'm coming off the ball, I'm getting punched in my mouth, I can't get off this dude, this dude is strong. Instead of just quitting and complaining and fighting with your coaches and talking back, you constantly find ways to get better, right? Absolutely. And, 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 and that, that, that says a lot because when you're doing things like that, and the thing is what people don't understand is you're not going to win every day. As much as you want to, you're not going to win every day. And it, Mayweather's undefeated on the, in the ring. But he didn't win when it came to him training and, and doing everything every day. He didn't win that. Because the way he trained, he had to kick his own ass. Mm -hmm. He failed. He had to. He had to train to where he was able to fail at some point. And mind you, he's talking about practice, right? And when you're training, that's your form of training, right? He had to get to a level of failure to win time to compete in competition time, game time, to win. Kept you around. Absolutely. For a long time. You know what I'm saying? And from that moment on, when you kind of figured it out, let's talk about how, how, how enjoyable that was, how fun it was. You, you got your first move, you beat somebody, you like, oh, now you got that confidence, I can do this. Yeah, but the funny thing is, figuring it out, it almost took maybe a year or two mm -hmm. to really figure it out. It's I mean, <laughs> it, it, it just wasn't like, because the... the the biggest growth that I had as a ball player was that that rookie to the second year. Mm. Like things was moving so fast that it seemed like it was moving slow. And then you know going to that that sophomore year, that second year, it was like okay, things really slowed down. Mm -hmm. I could really you know get my bearings underneath of me. I could really understand. I really understood the defense. Yeah. I just wasn't out there playing. Yeah. I was out there in the scheme. I understood what the, the secondary was doing. I was, I was understanding what the backers was doing behind me. So as you alluded to earlier, it, it was all a process. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you're not going to get everything the first go around, even being an entrepreneur. Like, right. any business you start, most likely, that first year is going to be hell. Hell. So it's, it's, it's just basically taking what you learned from that first year and compounding on to that second year. Have you, when was the last time you seen yourself on film from your rookie year? Oh man, probably I don't know. I, it's probably been easy, like five, seven years or something. Eight years. The last I, I don't remember the last time I seen myself, but the last time I seen myself, I was like, man, I was out there so terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I was out there so terrible. I look back at myself and like, man, I was a terrible ball player. <laughs> I do not know what these coaches seen in me. They was they was messing with me. They was giving me chance after chance. But I look back like I was trash. I couldn't even I couldn't even get I couldn't get that that technique. I couldn't grasp it. But like then for some reason it seemed so hard. I mean, and I, I think because too, I, I, when I was in Kansas, I was living. I was living it up. I was out and about. I was uh, you know, a lot of company. You know. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of company. 
<laughs> and you know, you just you're young, and it's like it's not college no more. You know what I'm saying? Because you're you're dealing with dudes who's actually literally investing in their body, investing in their craft. As a young guy like that, if you don't have the proper guidance, you're not investing in yourself that, in that way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There's guys who are spending thousands and thousands of dollars on their bodies. I was spending thousands and thousands on Patron and <laughs> putting it in my body. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that that is and and I'm telling you, that will separate you from the rest. There's some who can do that and there's some who can't. You know, and people don't understand when you for excuse me, when you first get in, you better follow that veteran who's been doing it for a very long time. Whether they're in your position or not, you need to follow them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had guys, pro bowlers, Hall of Famer, and I'm in a room learning from them. But they can, they can get it in the night before a game and be out there and do some pro bowlers type stuff. Yeah. And, and, you know, play some good ball. Because yeah. they've been doing it for thir 12, 13 years prior. Right? And they got the game figured out. They have it's nothing new to them. Who was your I room your rookie year? My rookie year, studs, man. I, I know I you was had blessed. Ty Law, but I was blessed with Ty Law. I was blessed with Passer Ten, Greg Wesley. Ooh. Those were the, the veterans in the room. For me, it was uh, Alan Rawson, Walt Harris, Nate Clements, and uh, and uh, OG Mike Lewis that played in Philly with beat up. Mm. Yeah, so I'm telling you, 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 and those are the old heads, and then we had, it was all youngsters after that, you know? Um, I think the next oldest one after that was oh, Benny Dre Sapp. Oh, Dre Bly, can't forget Uncle Dre. Oh, you, yeah, Dre Bly, he, he was your man, you know? And so when you have guys like that, you, you have to follow them. They're going to give you the game, and you have to take it. But sometimes we feel like we got it all figured out in some ways as well. Who, who would you say is your biggest mentor throughout your professional career that you kind of followed? Even if you played with him for a little while and then left him, but there was something that stuck with you that you carried with you. Uh, I'll probably take Jared Allen, Tom Bailey. Uh, that kind of was the foundation. And then when I got to Detroit, uh, I was playing with uh, Kyle Vandenbosch. Mm. Like, like, playing with him, it, it truly turned me up a little bit more like when I say I thought I was an effort guy like having an opportunity to practice with him and seeing his his workout seeing how how he conducted himself I was like okay if he can do that I can do it like having I, I can definitely say Jared Tamba and then kind of majority of it was uh Kyle Vandenbosch I mean with, with those three guys I think they, they really helped me become who the player I was yeah, I've, I've had some good ones along the way. Um, I think who really like mentored me and kind of, and not kind of, but really kept me, leveled me out big time, was probably Rasheem Mathis. You know, uh, he, he gave me that game. You know, I just seen the way he was living and just how he approached each day. And I'm like, I was a completely different dude when I left to, uh, didn't leave, but got, got my, my, my career displaced to, to Jacksonville, man. And uh, completely different guy, completely different guy. And it showed, carried, it carried on to the field. My, my game went to a whole different level, like, you know. And that, that, that you have that reality check in your life. There's something that always sets you back. There's something that happens that give you doubt. There's something that happens that give you fuel. There's something that happens that you just like, you know what, all I need is one more shot. Or there's something that happens that make you feel like you just ain't got it no more. You're going to quit. Elaborate on something that a challenge that you had that you feel like you just, I don't know if I can do this. It was when um, third year in Kansas City. We just had a new coaching staff change, um, doing everything right. I get my own parking spot. Uh, <laughs> that's huge. Yeah. Dude, that's huge. You get, my you own get your parking own parking spot. spot that's huge. Um, literally, I thought about three and a half, four weeks later, I get a I get a call on our day off on a Tuesday. Hey, 
I need you to come in the office. Mm. I had two of them in Kansas City. For what? <laughs> Why do you need me to come in the office on a Tuesday? Why can't you wait until Wednesday? Ooh, fight on your day off. Yeah, yeah. They said, yeah, man. Um, yeah, we gonna part ways. So, long story short, they was trying to trade me. Couldn't get what they what they wanted off of me, and I got released. Like that was something that I personally never went through before. Like I never, no one ever quit me. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, no one ever said, hey, you're not good enough. You have to go over there. My whole life is always whatever team I was on, that was the team I was on, and I did what I needed to do. Right. And and that also was the first time I also saw the business side of football. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, even though you have this talent, you have this, you're not fitting, you're not fitting what they want at that particular time, so we have to move on. Mind you, I just got a parking space. Right. So can can you imagine all this as as a you know I'm 22 going on 23 like all this is going on at this particular time and it's like well how do I get over this I just bought a house yeah. I just did this you know I have I have family living we have X Y and Z how can I get over this so but I mean it was that almost that loss rule it was 24 hours next figured out I had figure it and it's out it's crazy because he said he just finished figured out that well he didn't figure it out but he just he was more enlightened about the business side of things mm -hmm. but it's crazy it happens so often but it happens around us and we don't understand it yeah. until it happens to you right and that's one thing you try not to I try not to and I learned you know talking to this uh, this guy named Tim man these last couple of days and he always say you never categorize things you say you never never say everybody you never say nobody you never you can never tell somebody how you you understand or you know what they're going through if you've never been through it. You know what I'm saying? Like this, when I got released, I was at your house. Yeah. You know, going through it, and they signed me back. I'm, I'm in the living room. They called me. We when we in the basement. Remember they called me. I'm like, oh, they want me to come back and work out. Yeah. They want me to come back and work out. And I was like, all right, come back. And then they called me back. It was like, you ain't even got to come work out. You just show up to practice. Man, I've been grinding. I've been working out from team to team. Been grinding and been was ready to come back. You know. Played a hell of a game. Seal the deal. Look, I fump, make, make Buddy fumble, right? We play in Tampa. Make Buddy fumble, right? Turks recovers it, mm -hmm. right? He recovers it. We <laughs> get the ball. He recovers. We inside the five. Jamal Charles fumbles the ball. They get the ball back inside the five. They ran a play. Then they go at a quarterback sneak. They score. We go to overtime. We lose. Tuesday came around on our day off. Uh, yeah, well, call me back. Hey, I was on the street for nine weeks. Nine weeks. Was prepped for that moment. Was ready. Came out ready. Mm -hmm. Came out ready. Ended up, I didn't start the first half. I was just playing special teams. Second half, I think Brandon Flowers got a concussion. I ended up starting the whole second half. Had six tackles, five solos, and that fourth fumble and a pass breakup. Mm. And they let me go again. That's a good game. That was a good game. But, you know, that's the business of it. I may not understand it, don't know what they rhyme, why's and reasons, but it happens, you know what I'm saying? And at that moment in time when that happened to you, you said it was a 24 hour rule, but like, what, what was your going through that process and how long were you out before you went to the next thing? No, uh, it wasn't even, it was probably right at 24 hours. Soon, okay. soon the waivers uh, clear. As soon as you put on waivers? Yeah, that's when. Let's get them. Yeah, Detroit was, Literally, I already had my flight going to Detroit. Detroit already signed me. That's how I was with, with Jacksonville. <laughs> I turned my phone off and everybody calling, and then they hit my ex at the time. My mom hit her up and was just like, hey, uh, well, yeah, she was my ex at that time, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, hit her up. She ended up being my wife later on in life, but, you know, uh, ex wife now. But, uh, you know, um, but yeah, hit her up and, she like, hey, your mom need to talk to you. And that man, agents was blowing me up. Jacksonville was blowing me up because I'm I, at that time I felt defeated. Like, man, what the heck? Like, what what can I do? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what can I do? And it's not that I'm out there getting beat or anything like that. Or just it's it's a business. Mm -hmm. It's that 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 cycle. People are coming and going. People are coming and going. Now you got your next opportunity. Would would you feel like okay? What was your mindset going into that next team? Like, this is not gonna happen, or 
What was your mindset going after this you get that reality? This is business. This is business. Like Kansas City, it was everything was new. You know, new money, new friends, new opportunity. Um, once you get that call and then you go to the next team, it's like, okay, I, I didn't, I didn't want to make any friends. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do anything. I'm like, okay, I'm just here to play ball. Like I don't want to do anything. So, I uh, just my whole mindset on the whole game at that time, it, it shifted because. That transition going from one team to another team mm -hmm. in a matter of, you know, 24 hours, it's a shock. It's like, you know, doing contrast, hot, you in, you in a hot <laughs> tub, then you go inside <laughs> the cold tub. It's like you got, a whole new, you got a whole new system. You got a whole new culture. You got a whole new everything. everything. You got to figure out where you're going to live at. You got to figure out. You don't know the cost of living over there. You don't know nothing. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's everything. So, it was, it, it, man... That within itself was one of the most painful things. Like that, I, I I just basically took a step back. Didn't want to make friends. Didn't want to do anything. But I mean, after going to that team, it was a young team, so friends just it happens. Yeah, it you happens. build those relationships. But, yeah, but going in, I was like, yeah, I, I don't want to exchange numbers you, with nobody. I don't nothing. want to do nothing. But you know what's crazy, man? And the beautiful thing about football, man, it's it brings all walks of life together. I agree. You know what I'm saying? No matter if you white, black, no matter if you're blood, West Coast, crib, South, East Coast, yeah. crib. like next you know the the that completely different, that completely opposite could become one of your best friends mm -hmm. and, and, and and lifelong friends. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's crazy how the game brings everything together, man. And that's like probably when you're gone from the game, that's probably the biggest thing you miss is that locker room, the camaraderie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's 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 huge, man. Turk, I know you battled some injuries, man. Um, you had you had a ankle sprain, I think one a huge ankle sprain that kept you out for a while, right? And then also Achilles. Yes. Um going through that process and you came back after the Achilles, right? Or no? No. No. No, that's so that was, that was, that's what that had you out for a while. But you had a you had an ankle sprain that kept you out for a while too, right? Yeah, when I was in New Orleans, I kept yeah. getting high ankle sprains. I'm yeah. talking about like grade three high ankle sprains. Because you went Detroit to to New Orleans. Yes. And then now you're battling injuries. Mm -hmm. And what what was that that process like? What what was going through your head? It's like, man, I can't stay healthy. You know this the business. Was there any that stress set in? There was doubt set in. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is your Going in five, six, you know, you, you start almost getting over that hump. Like, okay, this is this is kind of those make or break years. Like, okay, are you are you really gonna get that get that check, or are you just gonna be this guy? You know what I'm saying? Or 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 are you gonna have that that uh, longer term career? So, it, it, all my injuries, it wasn't it, it wasn't anything like soft tissue or anything like that. It was it was players not being the, being able to stay on their feet. So all my injuries dealing with my ankles, other defensive linemen that was getting tossed out the club, <laughs> and they why? stay on your stay on the yeah. ground. Yeah, so it was one of those things. So it was like extremely frustrating because at at that point in time, I think that's when I was like almost at my peak. You know, that's when I truly understood the game. That's when I was preparing my body. I was watching, you know, so much had film. A had a, I was in my routine, it was perfect. But when once you get that little injury bug on you, sometimes it's just. It just stays on you. You can't do nothing about it, but it's trying to keep yourself in good spirits. Uh, same question? No. I can't. Oh, no. I was going to ask go you, um, so you retire in 2013, right? Yes. So my question is, uh, I know for me, I transitioned to another career. And it kind of happened like organically. Um, I had, I had never... Never in my life did I ever think that I would become a firefighter. And it just so happened that uh, I was thinking about for like literally five minutes. I was like, well, do I want to do law enforcement? I'm like, well, no, I don't even like cops. So, no, I'm not going to do that. And then uh, I had an older cousin. She told me that uh, she was like, you ever been to a fire station before? I was like, nah, never. And she sent me. Slauson Ave down in LA to it was actually a county station and uh, it was like I think with the exception of one person it was an all black crew and I was like wait a minute they got people that look like us that do this for real and then when I got there it just struck me as like a locker room feel mm -hmm. and like the hierarchy and the culture was very similar in that 
you might have an engineer that drives the, the engine or AO that drives the truck. He's like the defensive coordinator. The uh, engineer is like the offensive coordinator. The captains are the coaches and GMs. Or the uh, chiefs are like the GMs. The captains are like the head coaches. And then you got the players who are the firefighters. So um, that was like that dynamic that brought me into that world. So my question is, uh, what was it? Was it an organic process that brought you to build this business that you established? Was it the same? Was it a similar path, or was it something that you were thinking about for a long time? No, it's kind of it's kind of happened. Um, to be honest, uh, I got into cannabis just due to the fact of just all the locker rooms that I was in. I saw the consumption rate of cannabis, so I can conservatively say between forty and sixty percent of the players on the teams was was smoking cannabis. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of looking at that. Um, then um, <clears> met my girlfriend, well now wife at the time, she was a California native, so she used to always tell me about the medical uh, marijuana movement. So start doing my due diligence, start doing my due diligence, and then um, my goal was, after the league, was to buy and flip apartment complexes. I couldn't find the right mentor. However, it's this little handle thing called YouTube, I was like, if I really want to do this cultivation thing, if I really want to get inside cannabis, let me see exactly what can I do. I was trying to find a mentor involved in cannabis, but at that time in 20, what was this, 20, 12, yeah, like 12, 12 13, 14, 14, it wasn't how it is now. Mm -hmm. So I was doing my own little thing, uh, trying to figure out everything I possibly do on my own. And then it just was like, hey, this is this is the right move for me. This this is something that that I know this industry is going to is, is sustainable. It's it's already proven because it's already been around for so long, especially being in the state of California. The only thing is like, hey, you have to make sure you have a superior product and having the football being bred to play football. It was always. I am be I better? better. Yeah, you know, I got to be better. So it was like, OK, well, I may not be as great as this guy in cult in uh in the cultivation game right now but give me some time i am mm -hmm. so it was just that 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 slowly transition um i saw the economics of it from the just being a consumer myself to seeing how everyone else was consuming it on team so i was like hey if i learn how to grow this and grow a uh, superior product i'm always going to have i'm always going to have a position in this industry nice you know what's crazy uh when you were done playing in the, your Achilles, going through that process before, because this was part of the transition, mm -hmm. and within that, um, knowing that you wasn't going to back and play ball because that's something you truly loved, how did that make you feel? Oh, man. How going did through it, that process, how, going, how, how, how tough was that process? It was extremely tough. Um, I mean, depression, um, worry, anxiety. Um, this is something that I was doing since stage of nine, um, maybe missed one or two seasons due to injury, broken tibia bone, uh, freshman year in high school, but I never missed a season before. So that first year when I was out, like I just now can start watching football without feeling some type it's of a way. Tough process. Like yeah. it, it took me almost three and a half years, four years for me to watch a game, like a, a NFL game. So, I mean, it, it was extremely tough. And, and that's why I'm glad I had that transition. Like my transition, it, it really wasn't, it was smooth, but I invested so much money into something that I had no other time to kind of reflect on my previous life. It was like, okay, I have to get this done. I'm, I, I don't know what I'm doing per se, so I have to do everything in, in my power to, to make me a master at my craft. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't have time to, to look back and say, oh, I wish I could have had one yeah. more season. I had too much money invested in, in into my investment at that particular time for me to be like, okay, I just got to figure out this. I need to figure out how I can become the best. I was it gonna, is a very tough process. I was going to ask, um, do you think that earlier you stated that when you got to Tennessee, you made it a point to prove to like the naysayers that like, you know, I'm not just a football player, you know, I'm a student athlete and there's more to me than just football. And um, one of the things that we've talked about in the past is um, as a man, when you, I heard, I heard Terry Crews say, when you become your wins, you inevitably become your losses. Mm -hmm. And the key is not being a football player or whatever title that you have, but being a man who happens to play football. And do you think that because you went in with that mentality of proving that you're not just this, 
that it made your transition easier in 2013 when you hung, when you hung it up? I believe so. Absolutely. I mean, just just having that mindset of trying to prove someone wrong or just even better, proving what you know you can possibly do. Right. You know, and and that was and and I'm still facing that right now. Yeah. Hey, um I know what type of entrepreneur I can be. I know what type of role model I can be. I know what type of father. Mm. I know what type of friend I can be. So I need to push myself to those particular limits. Um, right. So so absolutely, like just just having that that grit to get turned around, get back up, and get back after it again. I mean, right. That that's something that I guess for all of us, we all have that by playing this sports for so long. I mean, mm-hmm. we all got knocked on our butt before and we had to get up. We all got took to the Barbie before, but you know, we yeah. had to play the next play. You know, yeah. I got I got embarrassed so many times. But, <laughs> right. You know, you Count still gotta us. get up and get it done. So I mean up. that's what it was. It's like, hey, even in this I'm I'm up every day doing what I need to do because I know this company can be worth billions of dollars. Right. I, I know this. So I'm gonna keep grinding until I achieve that. Yeah. I know for me, it's uh along those same lines it's i've always relished at the opportunity whether whether it's like for me when i played i always wanted to find creative ways to stick the ball mm-hmm. like can I, how, how do i take the ball from the office in this way you know is it formation recognition is it knowing my receiver is it knowing who this coordinator is whatever but that same energy is like as you said like in the various hats that we wear as fathers as entrepreneurs, as whatever endeavors that we're engaged upon, um, I always feel almost like a, it's almost like a childlike curiosity of how you can redefine yourself and like really exercising that creativity. Do you ever feel like that in, in your business ventures? Absolutely, absolutely. Like, and it's, like you said, you get, there's times you get knocked on your butt, you get embarrassed and, uh, you, 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 it's a constant grind. And when you're building a business, man, like you said, that first year is tough. You know what I'm saying? That second year is a little bit better, but it's tough. You're constantly failing. You, there's times where you're going to fail. You started this and it's just like, I got to race the wall. I got to tear down the paper. I got to do whatever. I got to get back to the ground board. I got to rebuild. It's like a kid. You stacking them blocks and then next, you know, you put it on that, that, ladder, that one tier and then everything falls back down and you got to rebuild again. That's life. That's business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you got to constantly keep fighting. And like I stated before, like there's times where I just want to quit every day. Every day I just be like, man, this, I, I'm not seeing the light at the end of the time. I don't, I don't see it. But that, 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 that competitive nature that's been instilled in us since we was kids, that motivation of having kids, you know what I'm saying? That motivation of wanting to take care of our families and, and keep going. It's like, I can't quit. I got to keep going. I'm going to fail every day but I'm going to keep getting better. I'm going to keep reevaluating. And that's how I got to keep going. I got to keep building. You know what I'm saying? And so that's the mindset you got to have when you're dealing with life, business, period. You know what I'm saying? With everything. And you can't be afraid to take that step. You can't be afraid to fail because you have to take that first step toward success. Whether you may not see it, you have to take that next step because you're going to fail each and every time when you don't take that step. But it also, well, the thing is this, failure is okay. It's okay. Um, failure is just, a, a, the way I look at failure is, is another form of feedback. Mm-hmm. You know, like, okay, if, if on a football analogy, if I need to come off the ball a little bit, a little bit, if I need to come off the ball, am I fall stepping? Yes, I'm failing at that, but I can understand what I did wrong to fix it. You know, if, if, you're, if you're a true person of growth, if, if you really want to get better, after you fail, after you get your feedback, you can go back and reevaluate how you did this and just attack it the next time a little yeah. different. I mean, th- those particular type things, taking those type risks for failure, we should be encouraging failure. Absolutely. We need to encourage Absolutely. failure because the more, the, the more things that we fail at, the better that we off we can be at something else. Absolutely, Absolutely. a chance. It's funny we was talking about uh, uh, guys when we played that like broke us in, and the same cat that was that I was getting torched by my rookie year, uh, Isaac Bruce. We was in the steam room, and um, I just asked him outright. I was like, I said, I be like, I'm an undrafted free agent. 
how not not only am I asking how do I stop you, but how do I be a pro? Like what is that? Yeah. Like what does that entail? And he kind of scratched his beard and he looked at me and he asked me, he's like, do you know what the difference between a rookie and a vet is? I said, nah. And he said, a vet is simply a rookie that's made enough mistakes. And then he told, that's when he told me, he was like, I failed at more plays than you've probably even played. And it just, it was like a paradigm shift in my mind to where now my mindset changed whenever I give up a play, whether it's a catch, a missed tackle, a deep ball, whatever blown covers, whatever. Now my approach is so much not so much as damn like I messed Just gotta up. Line it back up again. Now it's like, okay, that's one way I failed. Let me see if I can mess up another way and put that in my mental roller decks. And that's just you putting bullets in your holster when you take that mindset. Yeah, no, absolutely, man. It's just you you, you. like Jordan said, man, you fell out a hundred percent of the shots you don't take. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's that's the biggest thing. You got to take those steps. You got to take those shots. You got to have that confidence within yourself. And it's scary. It's scary. Anytime you have to make, anytime there's change that's created, whether it's from yourself or due to uh, another circumstance that was out of your control, it's scary. It's, 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 it's freaking scary. But you have to go for it. Like, I've been through the, like you said, when we've all been through it, as time was done playing ball. You, you get to that depressed state. Now you're trying to figure out what's next and, and, and how to do it. But I remember we going through this process, Terika, just trying to figure it out when we, we figured out, okay, this when you knew this is what you wanted to do, getting into the cannabis world. And, and now you got to the point where, you know that term, closed mouths don't get fed. You started talking to people. You started using your network. Right. And now you have this, you have this, this, this gorgeous ass facility. I mean, it's huge, huge. You got that tropical rainforest, <laughs> all the exotic, you know, you know, it's, it's in there. I mean, and I remember we going back and we was, we was hitting the dirty bomb, and I'm like, dude, what is this that you hit? What is it, bro? We don't have this in California. I'm talking about it was stuff. You it was like rolled up. You you somebody cut that grass and, and just threw some sticks in there. I'm like, this ain't it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To now you have the from from going from us going going from that and to now you have Hawaii in the shed. You know, you have that good growth. You have all these different medical grades. You have all this, this different product. Explain like where you at now and how'd you get there? Right now we currently um, have 20,000 square feet, roughly about 15,000 square feet of uh, canopy space. Um, we have 3.66 acres. We're going to erect another 40,000 square feet, probably uh, Q4, um, or all depends how life goes this year, but most likely in Q4. Um, our, our, the, the, company that, the company that we have, Global Research Ventures, is our mission is to cultivate premium genetics. Um, also, with saying that, we also propagate our own genetics as well. So in saying that, our whole focus at this particular point is high TAC, but we're creating genetics for high CBG, high um, high CBD as well, and also the other different type of cannabinoids inside of that. So I mean, it's it it's truly a blessing, as you were saying, coming from the the bush we we were smoking <laughs> in the city too. All seeds, stems, and yeah, sticks. To, to basically <laughs> what, what I'm growing now, it's 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 like night and day. But I mean, it's it was definitely a transition. Saying from you know we went from what five thousand square feet, five thousand to ten thousand. Now we're in twenty thousand square feet, about to build forty thousand square feet soon. So I mean, it, it like we like the whole conversation of this everything is just a transition it's a huge you know, transition just just you know taking one step at a time take taking that risk uh being risk adverse yeah. you know saying like hey 
if I'm jumping this pool, I, I'm not just going to put a pinky toe in it. I'm just going to go cannonball. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Man, that's that's crazy, man. man. Embrace they, the funk, man. Exactly. You got to, man. And it's 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 it's, it's, it's amazing to see what what they put together, man. Um, it's it's amazing, and I'm telling you, it's it's this the way. I, I love the transition because it's starting to get rid of these opioids, low key. People are starting to get a knowledge of that, and I love where the NFL is going with. You know, they're not testing mar- uh, marijuana. It's not a negative thing. I think. I think they're no longer doing that, and it was a problem before, but they were able to prescribe you these drugs that was tearing up your livers, kidneys, and you know all these things. People was getting addicted to these. There's ball players that were getting addicted to these prescription drugs. Damn, side and effects be worse than a human. Exactly, and the, the side effects you're dealing with. Um, and now, with your business, I think that's gonna be huge. You know, being a former athlete, and there's other athletes in this industry, but I think that's also going to be huge because, like you said, the the content of the athletes that was already, you know, before it was legal, who was, you know, using this drug. And back in the day, they used to be like, oh, it's a gateway drug to do everything. Nah, everything was a gateway drug in the 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. They were just doing everything. Yeah. Well, oh, this is new? Let's get it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like, you know, but uh, now it's, 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 it's great that they have the science behind it now. And the different things you have, like your indicas, your sativas, your hybrids, and different different things, your CBDs, you can rub it on your knees, you're good, and, and different things that can help me sleep, you know, something that's gonna keep me more alert. They have all this different, um, these different leaves or whatever. And, and by, with that being said, like, what would you say would probably be something that would be best used for as far as medical of, of relieving pain, sleeping, or just even like something to generate focus. Well, I mean, for relieving pain, it's definitely going to be the, the TAC, but it all depended on that particular patient or client or that that person. It all depends what it is. Is, is it a soft tissue, or is it more internal with nerves? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's it, it varies on the the particular type patient. But the the main thing is that it's still it is having been discussed. I mean, this plan been around for thousands and thousands of years, but we still don't have the proper research to see exactly what it can truly do. Mm-hmm. I mean, from uh, clearing up eczema to potentially helping um, uh, different type illnesses with TBIs, CTE. We, we don't yeah, know exactly seizures and stuff. Like exactly. That. So yeah. once once the stigma is 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 a hundred percent off of off of cannabis, and we really have truly institutional money to research this this crop i mean it the medical field is going to be flipped upside his head on, on his head just by the capabilities of this one crop can possibly do and and, I, and honestly like you said the medical field the industry that's why they're getting into this industry absolutely that's why they they wanted to make it medicinal that's why they wanted to add them taxes them state taxes the federal taxes because you go to a dispensary you know you know uh, a gram can cost you X amount of dollars, but say just ten dollars or whatever, and and you you walking out of that dispensary paying sixty, because because of, of the tax, state tax, the federal tax. Yeah, about twenty five percent. It all depends yeah. what city you're in. Between twenty five and thirty six percent. It's crazy. You look at it like, oh, that's only ten bucks. You walk out, pay sixty. <laughs> like, man, it's it's a cold game. But they they want their money on top of that, right? And that's why they legalize it. Like, you know what? This is what it is you know it's all comes down to business you know man it's crazy how that the medical industry is with these pills and you look at it it's like you go in there they you see these commercials like yeah man you got knee pain joint pain and all that you could take this this uh plocky ploxies or whatever i don't know they got a name for it plocky ploxies it's good for plyometrics or something <laughs> you know what i'm saying and they they run around on a commercial smile and stuff yeah you take your ploxy ploxies you're gonna be good right <laughs> two years later you up late at night talking about if you took ploxy ploxy and you suffer from this 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 and this and he's like dang i just wanted my knees to feel yeah, that good. was it <laughs> and and now your chest fell off you ain't got no mouth it's like, you know what I'm saying? Like, got a hole in my throat. <laughs> Not right. Screen is you, in shambles. You, you, you probably got a case. It's like, dang, I can't even call nobody if I had a case after what I just took. I just wanted my knees to feel good and everything else went wrong. And it's, it's sad that they, 
they allow this. These they pass these these medications, but I, I've never heard anybody ODing or you know off marijuana or something like that or being messed up. No studies have been found thus far. Uh, I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, worst case scenario, you get too much of the dodi bond, you're gonna have a little little tummy ache for too much. Too much of the munchies, right? The zoomies and webbies, bro. You know what I mean? The zoomies and webbies. That gas. That dirty bar will have you eat. You know, and that's another thing. There's people who have trouble eating. You know, they're, they're, they don't have the proper diets, and they need that to eat. Yeah, cannabis lowers your, um, your, uh, the blood sugar. So that's why you always have that, that munchy craving. So, I mean, it... It, it always go back to it, man. We just don't have the proper research. Once we get the proper research and we can really identify what strands can do what for what elements it can possibly uh, help or mitigate, the world's gonna be, you know, ten times better. I mean, we're talking about a natural, uh, uh, a natural crop that's getting fed through by seed and water. I mean, anything natural. It's. I mean, you know, we have anything natural. It's much better than bringing something artificial into your body. Right. You, this, this uh, I know football took us a lot of places, but now you've been to, every time I look, I'm getting ready to go here, I'm getting ready to go here. You've, this, 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 this industry has taken you so many different places for you to market your business, for you to get the, the resources you have for your, your business. Where are some of the places you've been? What are some some people that you meet? You don't have to throw no names out or anything like that, but like just places you've been, people you network with, and just some of the insight that you've got to to lead you to here. I mean, one of the most recent trips I just came back from was Serbia. Uh, we're putting a a deal together in Macedonia, mm. um, 120,000 square foot project, um, 5,000 square foot lab, where we have the potential chance of uh, creating oils for. Um, a lot of the countries in the EU. He's just throwing up businesses and buildings on the reg. Don't worry about it. He's just casual with Sound like Monopoly. Right, you know what I'm saying? I just bought this property. You crossed it, you paid $200. And we just came back from Serbia, but uh, hold on. No, no I mean, like, it, like, I mean from, from prime ministers to, you know, presidents to other countries to even, you know, ambassadors in, in the U.S., this this crop, I mean, I mean, even one of the, one of the great fellows that had a, had a, chance to get to meet was uh david dr david satcher former surgeon general from uh he was under bill clinton amazing gentleman um i mean just this, this crop right here by itself had a, a a great opportunity to meet a lot of powerful people that's awesome man that's awesome man and, and what people don't understand man they call it business ventures man business ventures man you you want to going to venture out and do a lot of different things. You're going to meet a lot of different people. You stick to your grind, man. And it's all about being personable. It's all about being gen uh, genuine, man, because um, your genuine, genuosity, genuality, what is it? How you say that? Genuosity, genuosity. Come on, Terrell. Help me out. Get it. Well, use it in this. What are you trying to say? Just you, him, being, being genuine. Oh, he ain't good. Being genuine, it, it takes you a lot of places, man. And people are gonna feel, feel that energy, you know? And you just, you know, you're very personable. You, you know how to, you know, conduct conversation with people. Um, and, and, and don't be afraid to talk to people because you never know who you may come across, right? And if you never talk to anybody, when it's the time to talk to somebody, you ain't gonna never know how to talk to anybody. And, and I, that's why I encourage a lot of man, kids, people, go, go, everybody, go visit places, man. Go to college, go off to college, because you're going to meet a whole different, uh, different demographic of people, and you're going to learn how to communicate with them and interact with them. Hey, if you've never been out of California, go. Go. Just see how people live. If you can, go for a long drive, even if it's just to a different state. I'm telling you, everybody interacts differently, and just, just listen to people, man. Um, being on social media, it's not always about the drama. It's not about, always about the, the, the laughs and the gimmicks. Yes, we do need good laughs. It's a lot of drama out there that we can get tied into and lose ourselves. Guys, there's, there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of people out there that's doing very, that, that's doing very positive things. There are, there's a lot of knowledge out there. There's people out there giving the game, dropping jewels, and he's showing you the way. This is why we bring guys like Turk on here, we know. 
uh, Lorenzo Booker, you know, we had uh, Victor Bolden, you know, just hearing different stories, guys, and just hearing ourselves and, 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 and take it and run with it, listen to it, man. It's, it's, it's knowledge out there for everybody, you know, and one of the biggest things that, that stuck with me tonight is if you, if you fail, keep fighting and keep getting better, you know. Um, Turk, I want to thank you for taking your time out to, uh, you know, come hang out with us, man. Man, I, I, I really appreciate it, man. This I try to come hang out with him here in a new country every day, you know. <laughs> Got to get so. it, man. <laughs> Got to get it. I love it, man. It's just, just the, the growth, man. And um, I never thought he would be family man all like this. We didn't see it back in the day. Don't tell nobody. But this man is living. He's doing it well, man. Proud of you, man. Appreciate it, man. Uh, that's why you got to surround yourself with good people. This, this, this man Terrell saying, you know, he he's new to the game, getting married, and hmm. it's been what three years? Uh, going on four. Four actually. years. Yeah. Time flew by. And he got his little man, and it's just it's that family. You know what I'm saying? It's just growth. And guys, it's a process. Things don't happen overnight, man. Y'all see these athletes. You guys see these business owners on there, and they, you see what they have now but you didn't see that grind in. And I'm telling you, stick to the fight. Keep failing, keep fighting, keep growing. Man, thank you guys. Always tuning in, much love, we love y'all. Beyond the breaks, we on the way. Woo!